you hit record, mate, do you want me to? Um, but yeah, talking about your guys' reaction and just what you said would be great. Oh, uh, for me, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, we're probably similar Welcome back to Prem Synth, where we are joined by my co-host Rob Dyson Hello. and the wonderful Damien Jackson, exec producer of Rise of the Synths. Uh, and Damien wants us to kind of give our feedback on the film, which is, you know, not too much pressure at all. I was curious. <laughs> you both no, wrote, you, we you know, wrote about this thing. <laughs> You've both written glowing reviews on the website, forevertheSynth.com. I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just cheat by bringing it up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember what I said. Um, um, no, I was, you know, we came out flushed and excited yeah. and this is it, you thrilled about it. There's two perspectives. Obviously, you've got someone here that didn't live the 80s. I was born in 88. And you've got someone that lived not only the 80s, but the 70s and the 60s uh, in Rob Dyson. And <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're so and for me, it was just a huge punch in the face of what I missed out on. Yeah. And it just makes me it just makes me want it more. And that, that's yeah. what it did a very, very good job of for me. I just saw all of these. There were a lot of visuals. I, I liked that a lot of the artists were kind of going, putting back their experiences, you know, what they went through in the 80s and what it meant to them, and I missed it all. So to hear all that from, from musicians in the scene that I love mm. was a, w w added a really sort of good perspective for me. Whereas you hear it from Bob John Bine, John Bobby, or whatever his name is, I'm like, your 80s weren't the same as us, <laughs> you know, as the, as the people that were just normal people in the 80s. So, you know, I can never quite comprehend what really went on well, in the 80s. Well, he a career in the 80s, didn't he? Um, well, whereas I was a young person in the 80s, so uh, the, all that aspirational stuff and I said in that review was I had fantasies of what being old would be like. Yeah. And I didn't know about, I don't know, it could have been nuclear Armageddon on our doorstep or whatever, or the riots or the poll tax and Thatcher and all that. All yeah. I knew was kids' cartoons, playing games, and sunsets on you know American TV and movies. And now Synthway, particularly this documentary, played all that back to me beautifully. Yeah. And it was just letting me relive what I thought it would be like, what the future was like, what I was I experiencing. Love that. I love that. the lens of a child. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I love the fact as well, we're not, it's not just Synthwave. It's it's no. what we're what we're not we're not what we're nostalgic for is just the, is the time the whole and thing. and one of the questions that's posed that you've just answered Joe is like, can you feel nostalgic for a time that you weren't around it yeah. and and people are and it's not just the music it's the aesthetics and everything else thing is, I, I mean you can you can carry over a lot of it into the nineties and I remember the awful floral sofas and pink curtains with a green carpet and all the real nasty stuff that mm. comes with oh, you know, sure. the eighties. It wasn't all good. Was you think it about really? Abigail's but party in early eighties. There was a lot of seventies hangover coming. Yeah, in gotcha. so that yeah. sounds like a seventies hangover. Either that or just bad taste. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, not, a lot, right. not a lot of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you buy that sofa? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no. It was truly awful. Uh, and a dog wee stain up in one corner as well. Mm. I remember specifically well. Mm. Um, dog stain. So we should probably play the trailer for those listening. Obviously, uh, obviously, this is a community station that haven't actually heard of Rise of the Synth. Just give us a very quick, you know, being that you're the exec producer, give us a quick blurb on what exactly it is, and we'll play the trailer for them. The oh, audio. Getting course. your own back now. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. It's, right. it's 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 that love letter to the scene. I think mm. when we started out. Um, there was this awareness that you've got a lot of different artists creating a lot of music and they're faceless. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Iban wanted to do when he, he discovered the scene was also he, he, brought, he wanted to bring these people together and, and create some kind of celebration and recognition of a scene that you, you, know, you could find on YouTube and you could, you could discover for yourself. But there wasn't this, this opportunity back then. I mean, it's, the scene has changed enormously in the last few years. Yeah. But what he managed to do was bring all that together and take you on a journey to discover and understand and appreciate the roots of where this was coming mm. from. And I think, Rob, anyone of our age would understand mm. that and recognize it. And others kind of like fantasize or, or long for it. But he managed to capture that beautifully, I think. So, and, and make it interesting along the way. So yeah. you're not just watching a lot of people talk about why or what they think synthwave is or how would you define it. Yeah. It's, it's so we, much richer than that. We were talking about, sorry, to talk, we, we were talking about how it, perhaps he didn't talk about the visuals and the wider aesthetic outside of the music and he did concentrate on the artist. But he told the story, he had all the iconography in there, he had references to the Terminator. Mm. Oh, the there's a great little story. flashlight of about sort of eight different 80s films. There is, yeah. Yeah. The, the montage is, is, is a awesome. yeah, Which really definitely, good. you know, plucked the right strings yeah. in my heart. Yeah, good. right. That's the one thing I was going to say is what, the, what this film has done, I mean, where I think for quite a while Synthwave was a bit of a, a MySpace cult, you still had that feel of you scratch our backs, we'll scratch yours, that's the only way to get this thing up and moving. The, the movie, the documentary, has given it a, a platform, it, it, it's taken things up a level. 
and people I think people are so much more aware now of what this what this whole scene can become if we all just kind of you know and, and I, I hope there's I mean is there room for another film we'll find out is there do you think part there's two. a bit of wiggle room perhaps? should have called it part one part yeah. one we were all you know, well we were thinking felt. is it going to be called the rise and rise of the sins or the rise and fall of the sins oh the rise and transformation evolution yeah, I consider that yeah there we go but what we'll do in the meantime uh, we're going to play the trailer for you guys uh, so if you don't get any uh, flashback of the 80s from this trailer then you just obviously won't know like yourself uh, and then we're going to play one of these songs from one of the best features of the uh, of the documentary in the form of 80s Stallone who yeah, is uh, openly yeah. vocal that's probably the best way of uh, putting it um, and that is part of keeping studs so stay tuned and we'll be talking to Ivan after the half hour marker hearing this, it's a message from the past and from the future. So we I kind of always play with the thought of like the original trailer is heavy eighties like footage, like piling on. It's got yeah, one heavy eighties past, and it's got and one I've got in the future as well. You can't do yeah. it somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you can't get the right spot. That's the problem. That's the right man. Yeah, I only knew like maybe six pairs. You can show. I didn't think there was going to be you know hundreds of other guys. You know, for promotional purposes, it was annoying. Well, even in the film, there's so much more you want to show, like live clips. At one point, we had like, Ollie singing and like, featuring a lot more live, heard about live stuff. And none of it were allowed to use. Is a so a and just, and even though the artist, so uh, you ain't James, you heard about it in the film. Nobody knows how it is. It's like, I'm if you use it, but then his company, his management, like, no, no way. It's just a big thing. 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 It's just a Influential uh, mainstream uh, thing as it has been. It'll get bigger it's to the point it's where it'll all fall out of the sound and it'll be super important. How long do we have? Maybe five, ten years. Maybe we'll step down to other people there. That's a lie. My name is John Crawford Grady. I'm here to introduce you in the box. 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 I'm here to this is our video. That's Damien Jackson, exec producer. That's Rob. I don't know. Yeah, that's Rob Dyson, <laughs> my co-host. I have here record. Ignore him. Oh. He's a cretin. Oh, I didn't uh, realise. Stay oh, tuned. Okay. Stay tuned. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. We're everywhere. This is 80s Salone Party Equity and Studs.